Good afternoon. It is time to talk about fakes from the aggressor state. Let's start with the fact that this week Russia has ramped up its efforts to misinform both the global community and even the community inside Ukraine. Unfortunately, some Ukrainian politicians, as well as the telegram channels controlled by them, have become allies of the aggressor state. There was the fake news that Defense Minister Umerov had allegedly submitted a proposal to fire Commander-in-Chief Zaluzhny. This information was spread by MP Aiev and it was widely publicized in the Russian media, as well as in Telegram channels. In particular, Russia Today reported that such a resignation is being prepared. Therefore, representatives of the Ukrainian politics should remember that their conscious or unconscious actions weaken Ukraine during the war. Meanwhile, the Russian propaganda machine continues to sway this flywheel. In particular, Russia Today publishes the opinion of so-called Professor Yevstafiev, who interprets the accident that happened to the assistant of Commander-in-Chief Daushny and gives it a fake political context. Zauzhny's assistant, who died in a grenade explosion, was a side victim of the ongoing feud over the suspended presidential election in Kyiv. And according to this, Zelensky and Zauzhny may oppose each other. This is a lie. First of all, there is no conflict between the military and political leadership, but such reports should precisely contribute to this fake, so that it undermines the trust of Ukrainians in the Ukrainian government. Second, with such fake news, Russia's fake news makers are trying to undermine support for Ukraine from European and American partners. Meanwhile, as a follow-up to this fake, there is a false video being spread out claiming that Commander-in-Chief called on the population of Ukraine to go to the squares of their cities and towns and the military to disobey the orders of the authorities. This video, made using deepfake technology, has been spread on social media. It is completely false and serves the same purpose. Unfortunately, this goal is also supported by some agents of Russian influence who identify themselves as Putin's classmates, groupmates, being at the same time outside of Russia. As well, they are tools of information warfare, spreading lies about the alleged intention of the office of the president to change the leadership of the Ukrainian general staff. This information is a continuation of the above-mentioned information line conducted by the Kremlin. This week I also received a fake news story about the alleged involvement of the Ukrainian authorities in child trafficking with the link to a website of doubtful quality. Russian telegram channels reported that allegedly journalistic investigations conducted by a French reporter pointed to the shadow side of the First Lady's charitable foundation, with the help of which, under the cover of evacuation measures, dozens of children were taken out of Ukraine and were later involved in a network engaged in the illegal sexual exploitation of minors. This is complete nonsense. But it was spread in the Russian media as true facts. Moreover, their website, which is allegedly created for this purpose, is completely fake too, and this is done with the very same purpose of undermining Ukraine's credibility in the West. This fake are happening on a regular basis, but now they have received an additional boost as far as the information propaganda work of the aggressor state has recently had no impact either outside Russia or inside Ukraine. Similarly, Russian propaganda spreads narratives that they are allegedly related to the attitude of the Ukrainian military leadership to the Ukrainian military as cannon fodder. In other words, this is a typical Russian technique of ascribing its own failure and its model of behavior to Ukraine. Everyone knows at what cost Russia broke through to Bakhmut and how many tens of thousands of Russian prisoners died there. And now they are trying to interpret similar accusations and accuse Ukraine of doing them. In particular, the Ramzai Telegram channel claims that the current strategy of the armed forces of Ukraine is a senseless attacks and assaults. However, another strategic plan of the Bakhmut butcher Zauzhny is based on the insensitivity of Ukrainians to losses, and it allows the Ukrainian command to ignore the number of killed. All of these theses I have voiced are absolute nonsense because, first of all, the armed forces of Ukraine are distinguished by the fact that they respect life of every soldier, unlike the Russian ones. Secondly, all these epithets have been used against the Russian military leadership itself and are now simply being addressed to the Ukrainian military leaders. Moving on, among other fakes that have been heard this week, there are the traditional statements of the secretary of the Russian Security Council, one of Russia's leaders, Nikolai Patrushev, who at a meeting with the Commonwealth of Independent States in Moscow tried to accuse Ukraine 
brain of what the entire civilized world accuses Russia itself of, in particular using terrorist methods. Kyiv is increasingly resorting to terrorist methods against Moscow, failing to achieve success on the battlefield. It has already tried to attack the Leningrad, Kalinin and Kursk nuclear power plants, says Patrushev. This is a lie. This was done to deflect blame from Russia itself for the occupation of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and attacks on targets located near other nuclear power plants in Ukraine, which almost brought the country to the verge of another nuclear disaster. And Russia continues to use Western information platforms of doubtful quality to spread its narratives. In particular, Jungewelt reports that Ukraine will be able to use the vast resources of the European Union, but will not have enough power to recover from the war. In particular, this publication writes the following. Kyiv will devour all of Brussels' money. Thus, in the long-term perspective, the EU will be weakened and will cease to be a competitor. This was emphasized by the publication due to Russian propaganda resources. If you look at what this Jungewelt is, publishing something like this, it turns out that this is a publication controlled by German Marxists and the far left, which was found in 1947 in the sector of Berlin that was occupied by the Soviet Union. And it was the newspaper of the Youth Association of German Youth during the time of Socialist Germany. In other words, it was a mouthpiece of German socialist propaganda, which continues to work in the same information mode as Moscow. Also, this week we saw attempts to undermine the situation in Ukraine with the help of former MPs, who put forward the idea that Russian-speaking defenders of Ukraine should be deprived of their rights. In particular, Russian telegram channels write about this. Soldiers of the armed forces should perceive Russian-speaking comrades as enemies. Once again, the former MP attacked Russian-speaking Ukrainian soldiers. According to her, it is not a merit to fight in the ranks of the armed forces of Ukraine. This information propaganda activity, unfortunately, is completely in line with what Russia is trying to do, that is to undermine the situation in Ukraine and divide Ukrainians into true and false patriots. And those former Ukrainian MPs who use these status should realize that they are playing alone with the enemy and stop this activity. Unfortunately, the media associated with the former fifth president of Ukraine are also spreading false information, in particular with reference to the head of the office of the president, saying that the head of the office stated that only one political force does not want to make peace with Russia, and this is allegedly the political force of the previous president. This information is completely false, and propaganda resource used a false screenshot of an online publication. And faking the pages of this publication, they even made a mistake in the name of the head of the office of the president, spelling it with a different letter. This proves once again that unfortunately Ukrainian propaganda has recently become a very convenient continuation of Russian propaganda, but inside our country. Once again, this is a reminder that we all should keep information hygiene and follow a framework that points to one only single we have to trust the official media, which have specific founders, which have a specific reputation to rely on for this information. And here is the traditional call to trust the Ukrainian military and political leadership. If you live outside of Ukraine, you can watch the Russian language Freedom Channel and the English language UATV channel. See you soon, and Ukraine will definitely win.